So let's look at this path dependence uh, briefly here. We're going to do two different paths and see how they're different in terms of the work that comes out. So we're going to take a, an ideal gas. We're going to assume that it's ideal. Let's take argon, for instance. Nice, non-interacting gas. We're going to do a compression. We're going to take argon with a certain gas, certain pressure, P1, volume V1. And we're going to go to a final state, argon, gas, P2, V2, where V1 is greater than V2 and P1 is less than P2. Okay, so if I draw this on a PV diagram, so there's volume on this axis, there's pressure on this axis, there's V1 here, there's V2 here, there's P1 here, P2 here, so I'm starting at P1, V1. I'm starting right here. And I'm going to end right here. Okay. Initial final, there, are, there are many ways I can get from one state to the other. I draw any sort of line to go here. Right? There are a couple obvious ones, which we're gonna, we can calculate, which we're going to do. So the first obvious one is to take V1 to V2 first with P constant. Okay? So I'll take this path here. I take V1 to V2 first, keeping the pressure constant of P1. Then I take P1 to P2, keeping the volume constant of V2. So let's call this path one. Then you take P1 to P2, V constant. Okay. An isobaric process followed by a uh, constant volume process. You could also do a different path. You could do, let me draw. <coughs> PV, there's my initial state, my final state here. I could take, first I could change the pressure and then change the volume. All right, so the second process is to take P1 to P2, V constant, and then you take V1 to V2 with P constant. Okay, this is path number two. Both are perfectly fine paths, and I'm going to assume that these paths are also reversible. Okay, let's assume that both are reversible, meaning that I'm doing this pretty slowly. So as I change, let's say I'm changing my volumes here, V1 to V2, it's, ha it's happening, I'm compressing it slowly, 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 so that at any point I could reverse the process without, um, uh, without uh, losing energy, right? It's always in equilibrium. All right, let's ca calculate the work that's involved with these two processes. Remember, the, it's the external pressure that's important. In this case, because it's a reversible process, the external pressure turns out to be, or is the same as the internal pressure. So it's reversible. That means that P external equals P. I'm doing it very slowly, so that I'm always in equilibrium between the external pressure and the internal pressure, so I can go back and forth. 